everybody. Welcome to the. Fire it up with CJ show. We have back with us today, Dr. Paul White, who is the author of Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace. And he is going to be talking to us about remote work and what that has meant for different companies and, um, and um, what you can learn as a manager or employee and what to expect with remote work. So welcome, um, Paul. Hey, thanks for having me back. All right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about when you conducted this research, because you've been conducting this kind of research for a while. Right. Um, so give, give us a sense of the trajectory of the research, how it's evolved, and the new findings once COVID hit. Yeah, so um, we have this online assessment called the Motivating by Appreciation Inventory. 275,000 people have taken it worldwide. Mm. So we're able to sort of slice and dice it. Uh, a couple of years before COVID, I actually did some research comparing on-site employees and uh, people working remotely on how they preferred to be shown appreciation. That sort of mm. provided a baseline. I then redid uh, or looked and actually it was like April and May of 2020. So right after COVID mm. hit and saw, you know, sort of those millions of new working from home employees and how they were doing and what was making a difference between those who were doing well and those who weren't. And then came back and revisited that in September uh, and to see sort of what was going on with them then, what was stressing them out. And then uh, this spring uh, did sort of this mammoth research of comparing both onsite, remote, pre-COVID, during COVID um, and um, different age groups. And it was 200,000 people in the research study uh, on you know what's going on with them and mm. how they're doing and differences and that kind of stuff. Okay, wow. So you've got a, a co collected a bunch of data. What's so interesting is you did a pre- COVID and then post COVID and right. then kind of, so can you give me kind of your, um, so when you walked in, um, what were your presumptions going in and what were, what was, what were your hypotheses and what was validated and what was not? Yeah. So I figured that, uh, so we have the five languages, right? So they're words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, tangible gifts and physical touch, which is obviously mm -hmm tough to do remotely, right? But we, we figured out some ways around that. But to see if, you know, thought that there was some differences there, we weren't exactly sure, thought quality time would be higher for remote workers because mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. sort of more isolated and all that. Came up a little bit, but not as much as we thought. Mm -hmm. Essentially, the, the pattern remained the same for both groups, that words of affirmation are the most frequently preferred. But uh, and then quality time second, but quality time came up higher, sort of not as far behind. Acts of service was still third, gifts was fourth, physical touch is really low in the, in the majority culture in, in uh, the US and Canada. Um, and so it was interesting that it wasn't so much uh, time as much as we thought. Hmm. The difference, a difference was that um, remote workers really want um, personal connection with uh, their colleagues and team members. Mm. And that actually was the difference between those who were surviving better during COVID than those who weren't, uh, besides mm. getting decent sleep, eating right, some exercise, not binge watching the anxiety producing news, but also staying connected with your colleagues mm. at a personal level, mm. not just talking about work, but mm how you're doing, how they're doing, you know, what's going on with family and all that, that that was a key factor of people who were managing the stress better. So people who were able to connect personally with their coworkers, right. use them as a resource to help them cope through somehow. So that was like their coping mechanism Yeah, yeah. is to connect with folks. Interesting. So then what else did you find um, in terms of, so you said there's on-site and remote, and I'm sure, I mean, one of the things that's so hard is, is understanding if work, your workforce is as productive. Did you have any research on that or have you looked into that at all? 
you know, I wasn't able to, people self-reported that they felt as productive, um, but there's some bias there. Right. <laughs> we, tend, we tend to rate ourselves more highly uh, in a lot of situations, not all, but, uh, but I think a big issue that came up, um, especially in as it relates to coming back, you know, from a remote work or hybrid, is that one of the key things that people valued was uh, more time as a result of not commuting and not having to get ready for work every day, you know, sort of the dress kind of code. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for a lot of people, I mean, that was at least two hours a day that they gained mm. that they could use in family relationships or personal exercise or mm. hobbies or hanging out with the dog. You know, I mean, it was just like, and that's been sort of the pushback from employees who have been largely working remotely that they don't want to go back uh, clearly full time. And so um, just that, that, and I think that's an important data point for leaders to 